Hello, and welcome to the Nursing and the Arts podcast. I'm your host, Susan J. Faris, MSNRN, SJF Communications. Here we will listen to stories from nurses that use the creative arts in their practice or in their personal lives. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We're on. Well, good morning, Michelle Harris. It's great to have you on Nursing in the Arts podcast. How are you today? Oh, I'm so good, Susan. Thank you so much for having me. I am so happy to have you. It feels like uh, we've been here before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit. So like long time no see, long right? Long time I see, yes. And actually, I was on your program, um, yes. the Conversing Nurse podcast, back in May. So thank you for that. And it's led us to have such a kindred spirit because we have so much in common as nursing in the arts, nurses in the arts, actually. So why don't you introduce yourself with your background, your uh, your degrees, all that, all your certifications. Tell me what, yeah. what they all mean. Well, thank you. And, you know, you were my wonderful episode 88. Ooh. And I loved having you on and I loved our conversation. So, and I love what you're doing with your podcast, uh, Nursing in the Arts is so, so so important. So we'll get to all of that. But um, I'm Michelle Harris, and I've been a nurse for, well, I'm still a nurse. So 38 years now, I'm practiced for 36 years, I have my bachelor's, and my certifications are in NICU care. So my RNC NIC, and my public health nurse uh, certificate. And, um, and then I do this little thing on the side, podcast the conversing nurse podcast and it's a lot of fun and it's really been such a learning experience for me being in NICU and peds my whole career wow. and then learning about all these other specialties and what nurses do and why they love it so yeah that's, you know yeah that's great you know what I noticed BSN PHN RNC NIC it rhymes I'm a poet Let's do some rap today. <laughs> so, I love it. <laughs> I always see like rhythm and stuff like that in, in, oh, yeah. in these, in these uh, abbreviations. They, I was uh, MSN RNCS years ago because I'm not certified any longer. I'm not working in the clinical field. But I think my mom used to say R RNC. MSN, RNC, M O U S E. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, well, welcome to the show here. So you are a PEDS and ICU nurse. I have such gratitude and I am just so respectful of NICU nurses, especially. They handle monumental tasks for these little ones. And um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the highs of NICU nursing and some of the lows? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the highs you can imagine is working with families, right? Mm -hmm. um, seeing them really embrace their new member of their family. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, working in peds in the NICU, of course, uh, sick kids, uh, premature babies, always mm -hmm. really uh, stressful, right? Um, if you're a parent and you can remember back to when your kids were sick um, and then imagine them having to be hospitalized. So you're so out of your element and you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, definitely a high is being able to comfort those parents that bring their sick child in or have a premature baby that has to be hospitalized for a long period of time to help them navigate the whole uh, hospital setting, learn their baby, learn how they can support their child right. and go home with a, an, an amazing baby. Do they come back or did they used to come back and see you guys uh, when the babies were grown or a little bit older? How did that feel? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So amazing. Getting cards at Christmas with pictures of, you know, these babies that were born at two pounds and, wow. you know, now there's these toddlers running around so satisfying. And, uh, and I had a unique perspective because I was also the high risk infant follow-up nurse. So I got to see them as they were growing in the clinic, oh, uh, regularly. Yeah. Hmm. Um, 
but yeah, it's so satisfying to know that you had a part in, in their success. Absolutely. And they were not just surviving, but now they're thriving. So you Absolutely. see that thriving as they return. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, you started your podcast a few years ago, 2022. So that was during COVID, yep. wasn't it? Right in the thick of it. Yep. Uh, just kind of as I was getting out and, and retiring. And I said, mm. you know what? I I I really love the nursing community and, and I'm a, a nurse to the core. It was a very strong identity for me. And I said, I need to stay connected to the nursing community. And so I started the podcast. That's yep. awesome. You know, I feel the same way. I'm not clinical any longer, but I remain a nurse. I keep licensed. I keep up with continuing education. I, yeah. you know, I wear that with pride as a nurse. Uh, I was licensed in 78. <laughs> so it's been a long, wow. long time, you know, and I sometimes have dreams uh, that I have to start and maintain a lot of IVs for some reason. I don't know. And what calculate is it the with those? I don't know. That just haunts me sometimes. Thank the gosh. Anxiety <laughs> around that, right? Yeah. And we had pumps in the beginning, you know, a little oh bit my gosh, after we started. But, but I remember lining up the bottles in the room. I was in the, uh, in the Navy at the time as a new nurse. And we'd have to calculate the drip. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> If I had to do that now, oh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so your, your motto or tagline is um, with your um, conversing nurse podcast, exploring the nursing profession, one conversation at a time. I love that. That is wonderful. It tells exactly what you do. You probably are mesmerized by all the different nursing specialties that are out there. How do people become guests? How do they find you or how do you find them? What do you do? That's a great question, Susan. Um, in the beginning, um, a lot of my guests were people that I knew because I know so many nurses and of course, nurses know nurses and they say, you know, my guests would say, oh, have you interviewed this type of nurse yet? I know a nurse. And then um, as I as I was more active on LinkedIn, I discovered LinkedIn, mm -hmm. which I had not discovered before. And it's a wonderful platform for meeting yeah. all kinds of professionals. And so, you know, soon after they would start contacting me and saying, oh my gosh, you know, I love what you're doing. I want to be on your podcast. I, I'm a nurse doing this specialty. And uh, that's kind of how word got out. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, I believe I saw you on Instagram and that's how I reached out to you. I may have done it that way. Yes. So I loved, you know, your blue and yellow. It was bright. And, and I listened to a few episodes and I'm like, that sounds like a great one. So I reached out to you yes. and rest is history. I did your um, podcast in May. And yep. uh, so people can listen to that as well. Maybe we'll put it in the show notes too. Yes. So yes. Please. The yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. I saw on your website that you like to travel yes. and that you're a grandma and you like to volunteer. Can you talk about each of those? Where's the, like the latest place you've been to and where do you want to go sometime in the future? Tell us about your grandparent days and how fulfilling that might be and what you do for volunteering. Yes. Um, I do like to travel and, and my listeners know, because I talk about it a lot, I have a lot of travel anxiety. Um, unlike you, I am not a spontaneous person. <laughs> I like to have everything planned out. I wish you would rub off on me a little bit and I could Same. be more spontaneous. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do like to travel and I've, I haven't traveled internationally yet. So oh. I would like to go to the UK, Scotland in particular. I heard and, Scotland's gorgeous. Uh, really, yeah. it's very green. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Ireland. I have some Irish roots in France and stuff. Oh. Um, but I've gone to Seattle. My daughter and I went to Seattle last year. Dallas, um, and I, you know, I've I've been, I've been a lot of places, and and I, I would love it if if there were a way to travel where it could be sort of like beam me up, Scotty. And and where just I get there. Just, yeah, just transported. <laughs> Don't have to, like, you know, catch a plane and all that. Just snap my fingers and be there. Maybe in the future, right? In the future. I was going to ask you about, so what makes you so anxious? Is it the planning, the packing, getting on the plane, being on the plane? What What is it that, you know? I think it's a new place. I think um, hmm. 
I, and, and once I get there, I'm always like, this is wonderful. This is beautiful. I can't believe that I was ever like anxious about this. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all of that, but you know, you, you have to get from one place to the other. And, and so I just, I, I challenge myself and I, and I just do it and work through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you work for, you work for so many years and now it's time in retirement to just enjoy yeah. your life, explore. It changes you as a person. Yeah. I, I know that with my military experience, I traveled to uh, different countries. And then with my husband, who's a corporate executive, we've lived overseas twice, actually, wow, for quite a while. And so it it changes you, you know, I was at the Olympics once in um, Norway. You know, so just different experiences change you and make you who you are. So keep traveling. What about grandma life? (laughs) <laughs> Tell us grandma about that. life is the best <laughs> life especially being retired you know you get to pick up your grandkids you know after school which you, I could never do that before you oh. know when I was working and it's just a such a different experience being a grandparent than being a parent um it's it's just I don't know it's all of the joys with none of the stress I know? love that you're yeah. right yeah yeah it's a lot of yeah. fun yeah, it's it's just fun every time to experience the world through their eyes absolutely. and remember back to, you know, that innocence and that carefree spirit. Yeah, mm-hmm. we could all learn from that. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ours are yeah. 17 and 21, almost almost oh 21. Gosh, yeah. Wow. So and, and they're not in the same state. So when yeah. we see them, it's a lot of joy. <clears throat> you know, oh, catching yeah. up. You know, it's, it's great. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse Love my it. voice here. What about your volunteering? Do yeah, you do so volunteering? I volunteer at the only <clears throat> free clinic in our county. And we serve, our county serves about one and a half million people. Wow. And so um, it's it's been a new endeavor for me. We don't see children. So we see adults that have chronic illnesses. And, you know, earlier I joked that, you know, I don't do big people. Mm-hmm. Well, volunteering in this capacity, I'm kind of forced to do big people. So we see a lot of people with um, diabetes and high blood pressure and high cholesterol and heart disease. And uh, learning all these medications has been really eye opening because we use very few medications in the NICU. And, you know, big people can be on a lot of medications and all the interactions and everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A new, it's a new language basically too. Right. Yeah. You, how yeah. many, how many hours do you do like a week or a month or how does it work? Um, every week I do probably about eight hours. Yeah. Four to eight hours. So right. on Tuesdays um, it's all nurses there and we have a pharmacy, a full pharmacy mm. and we f- refill medications for our clients. And then on Wednesdays we see our patients and, uh, you know, we do procedures, um, we do mm-hmm. lots of hemoglobin A1Cs, lots of blood sugars, uh, EKGs. We have a retired cardiologist. That's that amazing. Comes. Yeah, it's really, really been a great experience. So it's educational for you and fulfilling oh. for you. And you're giving back yeah. to your profession, even though you're not working, you know, yeah. regularly anymore, you still are. You still give yeah. back. That's yeah. awesome. I hear from a little birdie that you have a creative endeavor that is artistic besides and in in addition to the podcasting. Can you tell us about your greeting cards that you do? I'm so excited to hear about this. Yes. Well, you're a fellow card maker, right? And I am. Yeah. And I've always throughout my life, I've just always done so many different creative things, painting, you know, watercoloring, stitchery, embroidery, cross stitch, sewing. My grandmother taught me to sew at a very early age and I have continued that. And the latest is making greeting cards. And we joked the other day, you know, crafters, greeting card makers say, you know, why buy a card for $2.50 when I can make one for $57? <laughs> Is that the truth? Right, because we need the all the stamps need. and the mm-hmm. dyes and the inks and and, mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. And now I've involved my grandkids 
And so oh. they call me up and they say, I want to make a card for my mom or my teacher. Oh. Yeah. And I'm like, come on over. I got everything and just let them just play. That is so, sweet. That's yeah. And it's intergenerational and everything. Yeah. Now, do you sell the cards? Do you? No, no. Send they them are to just people? for, yeah. I just send them to people. People know on their birthday or Christmas, I send out handmade Christmas cards. Oh, I want to be on uh, your list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to exchange cards. But also, we'll do another podcast that I'll start about being in PR and public relations and business because I've been yeah. an entrepreneur since 1991. We need to get you to sell these at the different craft fairs and art uh, shows. So that's yeah. the next conversation we're going to have. <laughs> okay, we'll see about that. Yeah. Spe speaking of other things you do, I guess as an affiliate, you have a bookshop shop online. Can yeah. you tell us about that? That's another creative endeavor here from Michelle. It is, yeah. So when I started the podcast, um, you know, nurses and other medical professionals, I think we really love to read. Mm -hmm. And so I asked my guests for book recommendations. And then I partnered with bookshop.org as an affiliate. And I have set up my bookshop in on their site. And so anybody can access it. But it has the books that are recommended by each of my guests and, and a little bio on my guests. So that has been really fun for me to 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 you know kind of branch out in that way yeah and and i saw that you have a bookshop <laughs> on there as well and another that's really another cool. thing that we have got in common yes yeah mine, mine is called sjf communications and yeah um my book is there so maybe you can you can uh have me refer my book. I don't know if you can do that. Well, I'll just <laughs> I make self promote. You, I'll make you a books. I'll make you a bookstore <laughs> with your books in it. Great, great. Yeah. I also do coloring books. I've been doing that for about a year or so. Yeah. And yeah. Um, my godmother, who was my mom's best friend, my mom had passed away two years ago. She okay. reached out to me about a year ago. She, her daughter, passed away at age forty, cancer. Oh, wow. And she was a kindergarten teacher. She was lovely, and so. Um, she found all of this poetry and art, like drawings that she had done over the years, like when she was in high school and college and never spoke to anybody about it. So she sent me the originals, all the original handwritten or typed on a typewriter poems and wow. her original drawings. And I put it into a book and it's, it's called the cry of, yep. The cry of the seagull Janine's uh, sea of emotions I think it was called so oh that's I, I have to add that on my bookshop and if not it'll be on Amazon and all that so that that that's came out so in special. December yeah so I mean yeah. I try and that's giving back to my godmother because her grief is ongoing she passed yeah. away I think in 2001 some way long ago yeah. so um what we're both doing you know is therapeutic and cathartic right with the arts yes um, in, in terms of your podcast I also saw that you've just recently did your hundredth episode. Is that crazy? Wow. And I listened to it on my walk um, as I do my neighborhood walk. So I, I heard your brother. Can you tell yeah. us about that? That was kind of turning the tables on you, right? Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah. My brother, Chris Patty, he was my third guest and he's a nurse researcher at um, our local institution and, and just super smart and really was uh, my older brothers were the motivation for me to become a nurse. I watched them care for my grandfather after he uh -huh. had a stroke for many years as, as teenagers, they would wow. get home from high school and go over to my grandfather's house and, you know, change out his Foley catheter and get him up in the wheelchair and shower him. And these were kids that were, you know, teenage boys that could have been out Absolutely. You know, just That's incredible. Getting into all kinds of trouble. And they huh. weren't. They were caring for a beloved family member. And I saw their care and compassion. And I said, gosh, you know, I want to do that. And then hearing them come home with stories of being nurses and and the pride and the excitement they felt. Um, mm. I was like, that's it for me. I'm going to do that. But yeah, my brother interviewed me and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, you guys could check that out. Yeah. Um, I was just doing a screenshot. <laughs> so yeah. it interrupted us for a, for a second here. Um, are there any other 
nursing specialties that you would have done if you were to change specialties all these years? Wow. Okay. That's a really good question. And I think what I do is after every time I interview a nurse with a new specialty, Mm -hmm. I say, oh man, that would have been really (laughs) cool to do that. But I think uh, the overriding one that that I think about a lot is a, a legal nurse consultant which I've done also. And you did that too, <laughs> one of, yeah. One of the many things I've done as a consultant. I think it's, that's yeah. so fascinating, you know. It is, yeah. it is. Um, some people test, you know, testify, and I was a behind the scenes consultant. So looking at the case from, you know, a bigger picture and screening it for if it should go forward or not, um, looking at everything, you know, and um, and finding experts if needed, that kind of thing. It's, it, it's very rewarding. It's fairly lucrative. Um, and it's just one of the things that I've done. I, I really like, I like change and I like spontaneity, yeah. as you know. And so every geographic move made me look at what will I do now? Because if it was a different area to get the nursing license in or, you know, so I basically started a business in 91 and I've been more of an entrepreneur ever since getting out of the military in nursing. Um, very interesting life we both have here. Um So what nursing specialty haven't you had on your show? Well, we talked about this. Yeah, we talked about this behind the scenes the other day and uh, a nurse ethicist. nurse Um, You know, nursing is the most trusted profession for 22 years running, according to the Gallup agency. And there's a reason for that. And, you know, I think ethics is a big one. Mm. And we we are ethics are all around us in nursing every day and we practice ethics but we don't talk a lot about it Mm -mm. and there's not a lot of press on it there's not a lot of continuing education on nursing ethics so i would really love to talk to a nurse ethicist and you gave me some wonderful resources and i'm going to check those out so thank you so much for that yeah yeah but yeah i think that's just such a an interesting uh, specialty and one that affects us all in nursing. That's great. That would, that, that would be a, a nice one to hear for myself too. I don't think I've, I mean, legal nurse consulting, sometimes you're dealing with ethics sure. also with, with whoever you're, you know, looking out to examine, I guess. Yeah. Um, so this, this has been a fantastic interview. I just love getting to know you. I appreciate you. You're doing so much. And I love your soothing voice. When I listen to your podcast, you calm me down. You're so <laughs> kind. Thank is, you. Uh, one last you, question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you know, thank you for the compliment about my voice. <laughs> you know, I have no control over it. It's just something Beautiful. that God gave me. And people have teased me. You know, they've said that I should do a sleep podcast sleep Mm. podcasts are very popular and uh, you have to have a soothing voice for that so maybe that's another avenue that i'll take absolutely read read some books that are on the shelf that are not that interesting maybe i don't know something like that and last and lastly what do you like to do for fun what's your what's your fun Um, (laughs) go-to gosh for fun man i don't know i i swim a lot during the summer Mm -hmm. Uh, I love my pool. I'm absolutely blessed to have a pool because it's very hot here where I live in the summer. And where are you living again? Yeah. Visalia, is it? Yeah. Visalia, California. Yeah. We're just a little town of about 150,000, right smack dab in the middle of California, very agricultural area. Yeah. And, and it's, it gets very hot you know, summers are like 110 degrees. So Mm -hmm. the pool is wonderful. I feel most free and, and fun in the pool. And, and uh, I love to go for walks uh, in the early morning when it's cool. And I just, you know, I have a, my house is kind of a a hub for my family, for my extended family. So nieces and nephews and grand nieces and nephews and sisters and brothers. And, you know, it's, it's the party house. And, you know, we just have Sounds a lot of great. fun. Good, yeah, good, we just good. have a lot of fun gathering and talking and just being together as a family. That's awesome. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being on our show here. 
the, the Nursing in the Arts podcast. We're still in our infancy, so I may call you for some tips. I don't know. And I, I love, love what you do. I love your snippets that you do at the end, the five-minute yeah. snippets. Uh, and I love your colors and your logo. And you, all around you. You're, you're just great to have around and a great resource for nurses. And uh, please, if you haven't listened to the Conversing Nurse podcast, please, we will put that in the show notes and visit, and hopefully you'll be a guest too <laughs> someday. So thank, thank you, you so Michelle. much, Susan. I Great love what you're you. doing. It's so vital to the nursing profession to have a creative endeavor, to have a creative outlet and, and uh, keep it up. I love what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Have, have a great rest of the summer. <laughs> Talk yeah. to you soon. Okay, okay, take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Nursing and the Arts podcast. We loved having you here. And don't forget to sign up for our Facebook group, Nursing and the Arts, as well. And for information, you can email info at sjfcommunications.com.